Hello everybody and welcome to part 13 of our Practical Flask tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is creating our registration page for our grand user system that we're making. So we've got the login form but in order to kind of move forward with the login form we need to compare it against a database of usernames and passwords. So before we have a database of usernames and passwords, we need a way to actually populate that database. Um, and also we actually, to populate the database, we have to create that database. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to access the database that we already have. Now, if you've been following along, you already have uh, the uh, MySQL database, um, basically like the MySQL stuff and the server so you've got the development and the server. So if you don't have MySQL Server and MySQL Dev, you need to go ahead and get those. Otherwise, if you've been following along, uh, you're ready to get started. So first to connect to our MySQL database, what we're going to type here is going to be uh, MySQL. And that's just notifying that that's the program we want to run. And then we're going to say dash dash user e equals, and right now, <clears throat> the only MySQL user that we have is the root user. Now don't confuse root here with your root user uh, to your server. They're, re they're just called root because it's like the main, you know, like super admin user, okay? So user root, but that's a different root. And then you're gonna need to do dash p for password. Uh, and that's basically it right now. So you'll hit enter and then it'll ask you for your password. Again, this is the password to the root user of your MySQL database, not the password to your root user to your server. So. Uh, hopefully you remember what the root user's uh, password is. I forget the full list of instructions to do if you forget your root user password, but I've done it in the past. And it's actually freakishly simple uh, to reset the root user password as long as you have access to the root <clears throat> user to the server. So uh, keep that in mind. And in fact, I'm not even sure, honestly, actually I didn't even, I think I did it without access to a root user even. It was just a pseudo user to reset the database password. And it's like, I don't know, 10 steps or something. It's very short. Anyway, enough on that. Google it if you forget. Uh, I'm not going to cover that here. So anyways, I'm going to enter my password and my password was cookies exclamation mark. No reason to hide it from you because you're going to see it very soon. So now we're connected to the, uh, to my SQL. And one thing you can do, you can do show uh, databases, for example, and show databases, all caps, semicolon, and then here are the current databases. These are just the default. They're going to be there uh, for everyone. Now what we want to do is we actually want to create, um, well, first of all, we want to create, so you've got, you've got databases and then you've got tables, okay? So first what we want to do is we want to create the, um, the database. So first you've got a, a database. So we're going to do create database and then you can name the database. I'm going to name this database Python programming like that. Semicolon and that's it. Okay? That's done. One row affected. Now when it comes to MySQL and databases and tables it can be really confusing. Most people if they're not used to working with databases they actually can they their, in their mind, a database is, is what is actually a table. So a table is what is like the spreadsheet like uh, with rows and columns. Okay, that's a table. And then a conglomeration of tables is what makes up your database. So keep that in mind. So we've got the database that's made, but you don't insert rows and columns into a database, you insert them into a table. So now we create a table. Now when you create a table, you specify all the things and the attributes of that table. You can come by later on and modify that, but it's best to go ahead and use some foresight. And for the most part uh, that I can recall, anytime I've modified a table, I've actually copied and copied the table over to a new table that I created. So it's kind of a, a hassle if you want to change anything. So use some foresight into what your, your needs are going to be. So for me, we're going to do create table users. And I will just say, you know, first you've got, <clears throat> say, a user table. And um, like myself included, like I'm thinking maybe I might want to add a forum to pythonprogramming.net. But if you had a forum, uh, you've got some extra things that you'd track in a database really simply, like posts, post count, 
join date, you know, stuff like that. That doesn't necessarily have to be in the t user's table. And in fact, you might save on a, a lot of processing by not leaving it all in one table and using local tables with data. As long as you don't have too much copied data, you, you know, the username might be the same, but the actual data contained in that table, as long as there's not too much uh, overlap, then you're probably better off that way. So anyways, create table users, so that's the name of the table, and then now we're going to specify the columns within it. So the first column is going to be UID. That's going to be a user ID, and that will be an integer, so use capital INT for integer, and it is going to be 11 long at its max. So we've got UID integer, then we're going to say this is auto increment and it is also a primary key. Next we have a uh, username. Oops. We'll undercase that. Username. Username is going to be a var car, which is a variable character. This means uh, for example, we're saying 20. If it was just car, it would always have 20 length, no matter what. This is saying it can be any length up to 20. After that, done. It can't be any longer. So we're saying, basically we're saying usernames can be 1 to 20 long. Um, and then, now you've got usernames, now we want to add uh, passwords. So this will be, uh, let's see, varcar20. Uh, then we've got comma, password. This will be a varcar 100. I, you know, 50 is probably <laughs> good enough, but 100 is definitely good enough for a password. Then we'll have email, possibly. Right now, um, I can't remember if I collect emails or not. I don't. I don't think I even do. I'm not positive. I think yeah, email is one of the options. You just we don't validate via email right now. Anyway, email varcar 50. If you have a longer email than 50, something's wrong with you. <laughs> settings and so here's one where settings right now at least at the time of me filming this video actually contains nothing okay settings has no use right now for me I don't change anything or modify but you can kind of conceive that in the future you might allow users to I don't know have some sort of settings on your website that you want to change so uh, things like suggestions or uh, maybe the color scheme of the website, you know, stuff like that. You might want to change. So settings, that's a pretty common one. People are going to have settings um, on websites. So that's kind of me using some foresight that we might eventually want settings. Varcar 32500. Basically, we're allowing that to be really, really, really long. And next, we're going to say uh, tracking. And this is, again, Varcar 32500. So what's happening here is uh, the tracking is basically what tutorials has that user already done. And so we use tracking to update things like percent complete and then possibly in the future use it for things like suggested tutorials, stuff like that. Based on the tutorials that you've completed, we can kind of deduce or induce that you might be interested in another topic, something like that. So anyways, tracking and then finally, um, right now again it doesn't have any bearing on my website but it is in my database and that is rank it's an integer and up and it can be three long so basically that's for you know let's say a typical user let's say if there's some sort of way to upgrade your user to say a moderator okay and then you've got admin user and then maybe super admin and that kind of stuff so you might want to have user ranks in there also you could give people rank based on the amount of tutorials that they complete all kinds of stuff that you could possibly do here so that's that and then we'll of course end with a semicolon that's kind of a long list of stuff that we've just added but hopefully it makes sense if you have any questions about anything mostly we're using varcar here uh, the only thing I will say is this is really inefficient. Well, it's not inefficient, I want to say, but this is not the best, most efficient method, especially the massive VAR cards we are allowing here. Um, and then there's also things like blobs and uh, I forget. There's like big text or something. I can't remember all the all the things, but there's there's like probably like five different data types or more uh, that you can pass through as a column, you know, type and depending on what you're doing 
each one will be slightly different as far as how useful it is to you and how efficient it is to you in processing. For our uses, this table is not like a high input output table. It's not referenced at a high rate or by a large rate. So this is good enough. Um, and actually, as, as we'll see later on, uh, through the lack of use of MySQL on pythonprogramming.net, our processing on that website is actually next to nothing. Uh, I'm paying less than I did whenever I was using uh, <coughs> uh, WordPress. And there were, I mean, you could make a user account on that WordPress, but most people didn't. So I already have more users on Python programming than, than I did on WordPress. Anyways, and that's including bots. Anyways, hit enter. Hopefully, uh, oh, darn. Uh, luckily, we can use the up arrow and we don't have to do anything. But anyways, when you connect to a database, the first thing you have to do is you got to use, uh, use that database. So we created that database, but we're not using that database. So use, whoops, all caps, use Python programming or whatever you call it, the database. Now our database changed. And now, uh, you could do show tables, but we don't have any tables. It's an empty set, as it says. But now, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. Let's create that table. OK, now let's do show tables. And now we have users. And we can do something like this. Like, if you forget, maybe, what are my column names in your, in your table, you can use what's called describe. And you can describe users. And this will tell you, basically, <clears throat> all there is to know about your whatever table you use so the field the type is it null like or do will we will we allow that value to be null key you've got a primary key default null nothing and then any extra parameters this is an auto increment so the first user will just automatically be one and the next one will be two we won't ever actually need to specify and say hey this user is uid two or three or whatever so that's that we've got now our database uh, but we have nothing in it. But of course, uh, you could do things like uh, select all from users like this. It just so happens to be that there's nothing there, but soon there might be there. You could update and you could you know, insert and do all kinds of SQL commands uh, right in here. But we're not going to do that. We're not really interested in doing it via the command line. We want our program, our Flask application to do it. So, in order to get our Flask application to do it, we're going to need a new module, and then we're going to make an actual connection script that will connect to our DB for us, and then uh, we can use that within our init script and all that. So, that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have any questions or concerns or comments or whatever up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.